call our May 18th meeting of the Cookville City Council to order. Can we have a roll call, please? Councilman Woodford. Present. Councilman Henry. Here. Mayor Shelton. Here. Vice Mayor Epps. Here. Councilman Walmack. Here. All present. <clears throat> Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite those that wish to do so to stand for the invocation given tonight by Councilman Dwight Henry, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag. Call for prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we just such a, we're such a grateful people, grateful for your great love for us, grateful for this wonderful community which we live in and enjoy. We thank you that we have your wisdom and your clarity of thought as we make decisions concerning this community, and we believe that we receive these things in the name of your Son and our precious Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 3, consider approval of agenda as presented. Are there any changes or corrections? Mayor, we have no changes to the agenda. All right. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, four uh, four a consider appointment of representative of the Putnam County Tax Equalization Board. Mike Davidson. And council members, as uh, as you know, the city's appointment to the Board of Equalization was Mr. John Donnelly. Mr. Donnelly passed away a couple of weeks ago, um, and that Board of Equalization meets uh, beginning June first. I'd ask you to consider appointing Jim Hughes to fill that one-year term, unexpired term of Mr. Donnelly uh, as the city's representative to the Board of Equalization. Thank you. Do we have a nomination for Mr. Hughes? So moved. Moved. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Jim Hughes. Thank you. Uh, old Business 5A, consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on May 4th, 2017. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Five B. Consider on second and final reading ordinance 0170405 amendments to the zoning code provisions relative to hospice residence homes in the RS10, RS5, RD, RM8, and RM14 district to include a number of assisted living units. Mr. Mills. Um, Mayor, Council members, uh, the Planning Commission approved amendments to the zoning districts you just reviewed, Mayor, um, to reclassify hospice residence home as hospice residence home slash assisted living facility and also to insert uh, revised conditions for the approval of such uses in those zones and that would be to increase the maximum number of residents from 10 to 15 and to insert a condition specifying that the maximum uh, uh, maximum of the residents could be of 10 could be classified as assisted living and that a minimum of five people or five beds should be uh, retained at all times for hospice care um, the planning department concurred with this recommendation, and we've had no calls or comments since first reading. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Is second. there a motion and a second? Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carried. Thank you. 5C, consider on second and final reading. Ordinance 0170406, RAO Redevelopment Area Overlay Zoning for Magnolia Creek, a proposed 52-lot single-family detached development located at 2400 Freer Hill Road. Mr. Mills. Mayor Council members, this is the location of this, the property, which would be our fifth REO, the first away from the core of the city. And as you noted, it's 52 uh, single family detached units. Um, <clears throat> this is the second final reading of this ordinance. We've had no calls or comments since first reading. Thank you. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Got a motion, a second. Any discussion? I have a comment. Yes, Mayor. Hey, uh, I just I'd like to say, I was just kind of looking at. At, at this whole project and I just really am very pleased with the way the RAO uh, uh, re redistricting re rezoning has has went it's taking properties that are uh, that that are a, a sorely need in um, redevelopment and it's just it's put into some really nice stuff and actually looking at the uh, engineers and architects that have uh, the pro what they propose to put in here it's going to be it's going to be very nice and it's going to be quite an asset and the other thing too it's going to be affordable housing uh, for it, it's going to be affordable housing and yes. it, it hits everything on all cylinders and I, I, I'm very I'm very pleased with this mm -hmm. and I, I look forward to our REO uh, redistricting con continuing in, the, in this fashion so Thanks so much, Jim, for the uh, Planning Commission doing all the really a lot of hard work in order to, to make th this sort of stuff happen. Thank well, you very much. This is, you. this is the intent to do this, get areas that were blighted or not in the best of shape for help developers uh, 
make it a uh, beneficial for them to redevelop and also the neighborhood to improve and single family you know uh, having detached single family detached housing affordable is a goal too so it's it's a, a good situation it's a big deal thank you I, I might echo just what vice mayor Epps and councilman woodford said it it's it this this wins on lots of levels you get some housing that's priced uh, in, in the area that where our city needs that pr priced housing you get the developer incentives and then uh, you clean up an area that's dilapidated deteriorated and this is this is an exciting project and i agree with what's been said about about my pleasure in seeing it happen very good um all vote five years both motion carries Thank you. Uh, con consent agenda. Consider awarding bids for transformers for the electric department. Is there a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Okay, under new business, 7A, hold a public hearing and consider on first reading ordinance 0170507, amending the budgets of the general fund, solid waste fund, drug fund, animal control fund, economic development fund, and quality of life fund of the city of Cookville for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2017. Brenda. Mayor and council, we are requesting your approval for amendments to the budgets of six of our funds. Mm -hmm. The first one is our largest fund, the general fund. This ordinance will increase revenues in the general fund by $978,452. And that breaks down as 75,000 for property taxes, all income tax, 200,000, building permits, 50,000, um, ICAC grant revenues, 20,000, GHSO grant revenues, 35,000, other police grants, 44,000, a fire department grant, $225,455, UCC home, UCDD home grant, 50,997, contributions and grants other, $80,000, $8,000, and sell property land, and right away, $270,000. And then, um, also in the general fund, this ordinance will increase expenditures, um, budgeted expenditures by $935,952. Um, for the fire department, that's an increase in salaries and wages of $220,000. Um, employee health insurance, $40,000, and workers' comp claims, $50,000. For the Leisure Services Department, an increase in the budget for employee health insurance of 11500 Claims and damages liability, 25000 For the Codes Department, an increase of salary and wages of, a decrease of salaries and wages of 8700 and an increase in contracted services of 8700 An increase in claims and damages liability of $6,000. For the planning department, a decrease of salaries and wages of $13,000 and an increase in claims and damages liability, $13,000. And then the offsetting grant expenses for the, um, the grant revenue that we had. For the general department, $8,000. And for the police department, grant expense of $99,000. For the fire department, a federal grant of $225,455 and the UCDD home grant expense of $50,997. And then on the capital outlay expenditures, um, we had budgeted $80,000 for a match for a grant for a fire truck. That grant was not awarded in the last grant cycle, so we um, gave permission to the, or you gave permission to the fire department to use that $80,000 to buy other equipment. So that's simply a reclass on the wrong line item from a truck to equipment. And then in the public works department, the Ridgedale Drive project was actually a prior year project that got started late last fiscal year and basically finished up in this current fiscal year. $170,000 and in public works brush grinding, $30,000. So total increase in expenditures, budgeted expenditures for the general department is $935,952. The solid waste fund, we're requesting an increase in revenues of $30,000 and an increase in, and that's in property taxes, and an increase in repairs and maintenance vehicles of $30,000. And then the, the drug fund, we're requesting an increase in revenues of $55,000. That's for confiscated property, 35,000, court fines, 20,000, and then an increase in expenditures of 20,000, and that's for investigation expenditures. And in the animal control fund, an increase in revenues of $7,000 in the form of donations, and an increase in expenditures of 10700 
That's 7,500 for salaries and wages and 3,200 in the repairs and maintenance buildings category. Economic development fund, an increase in budgeted revenues of $35,000 and that's in property taxes, an increase in budgeted expenditures of 71,000 on the line item for the Highlands Business Park construction expenditures. And the last fund, the quality of life fund, the rails to trails project is accounted for in this fund. So we've got um, an increase in revenues, 200,000 in rails to trails grants and local contributions, 10,000 in property taxes, and then an increase in budgeted expenditures for the rails to trails project, 210,000 and other park and recs expenditures of 2,000. And I will point out to you since um, I presented this to you at the work session on Monday, in the general fund, I did make one slight change, and that's in the UCDD home grant. That is a grant that the city has that UCDD is administering for us, and based on conversations with them this week, I bumped that up $30,000 because they do anticipate spending more of that money by June 30th. How much? At uh, $30,000. So um, that's all the changes in the budgeted expenditures, and I'd recommend your approval. All right. Thank you, Finance Director Emil. Um, do we have a motion? So Motion second. and a second. Okay, at this time we'll open the public hearing portion of the meeting. Do we have anyone that would like to speak about this matter? All right. I will close the public hearing. Uh, any comments or questions from the council? One last thing. I think you said in the work session this is the last monies that we've had to put into hi the Highland uh, Business Park. Yes, that was the That's final payment. That's been going on was for made. many, many years, as I recall. Yes, yeah, since 2008 was, I think, when we first did the master plan for that. So. And I have a question too, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, uh, Brenda, the rails the trails, the increase in, in expenditures of $210,000. And remind me, what was that for? Pardon me? There was an increase in expenditures for the rails with trails project of 210. That was because um, it's been a project that's gone over many years. Right. Um, and we didn't we didn't get as much done in the previous fiscal year that you know we rolled over this year and then we also did a change order a supplement um, that we approved this year so that's part of that too is it is it something physically we can see <laughs> or is it just it's just a, or is it just this is just an accounting no that, that's it, that's construction costs okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah it was just a timing issue more oh, got okay. done this fiscal year than what was originally budgeted yeah. because we got less done last fiscal year yeah. okay because I'm one of those folks that's on it all the time and I know lots of people out there they're gonna hear okay they have an increase in expenditure of two hundred ten thousand dollars they're gonna no, go this is money what else we could, cool yeah. we're gonna do on this yeah. thing yeah. so it's money that's already it's money that's already spoken for okay right. I just wanted right. to make sure and clarify that thank yeah. you yeah this is just kind of a housekeeping thing yeah. to amend okay. the budget Great. for this year so it's thank to you. repave where you run on it so much already <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> you know, I, I think the uh, rail trail started in 2005 2006 when we were on the yes. uh, council together and it's taken this long to really get it finished so things take a long time and yeah and that was one of those projects that took many years for too. your persistence <coughs> everybody <coughs> all right um in, you, yes sir thank you mayor and brenda if memory serves based on the work session and tonight so at, at the end of the day we had nine hundred thousand dollars plus of unanticipated expenses but didn't you also tell us that we have $900,000 plus of unanticipated revenue. Yes, that that's correct? correct. To cover those expenditures, yes. Once it is, well, they were close to the it's same. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> can you see how that works out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. Yes. That's what they do, Dwight. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all I'll vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank you. 7B, consider extending the time allowed for the purchase of the rights of way closed and abandoned, a portion of North Whitney Avenue, West 8th Street, West 9th Street, all of Armstrong Avenue, and Alley through ordinance 0170202 from 90 to 180 days from the date approved on second and final reading of the ordinance. Mr. Mills. Mayor and Council Members, Ordinance 170202 was adopted in mid-March, our second meeting in March, to close and abandon these streets and alley or an alley um, and approved the sale of these right-of-ways to Tennessee Tech. Um, Tennessee Tech um, has run into a delay. They have to get approval from the state building commission. Jim, is that right? Who we Correct. figured out it finally who it was and they don't meet till late right. June. And the ordinance when it was originally adopted gave a 90 day period for the uh, time for the transaction to be completed. Uh, they won't be able to meet that or it's going to be really close. So to be safe, 
They've requested an extension of 90 days, and the planning department will recommend that the council approve an extension of the expiration time as specified in 1702-02. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Move. Second. Motion a second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. Seven C. Consider approval of property lease agreement with First Baptist Church. Mike Davidson. Mayor and council members, uh, as you know. For the last several months, we've talked about needing uh, the need for additional parking in the downtown area. Uh, the downtown area is very vibrant and lively um, every day of the week. And the planning department has done uh, a parking study. They're currently wrapping up a parking utilization study to see exactly how the different public parking uh, is being utilized in the downtown area. So we know there's a need for additional parking. And with the recent announcement of SAIC, to commence operations out of the Regions Bank building. We know there's that's just even more demand for for parking downtown. So we uh, we were talked with First Baptist Church next door about the possibility of trying to lease the property they own across the street from City Hall at the corner of Walnut and Spring about trying to lease that from them and to create a um, public parking lot there. So they were very open to the idea. We've been able to work out a lease agreement with them and that lease agreement is uh, fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, the city would uh, construct approximately 185 uh, paved parking spaces on that lot with 50 of those spaces uh, adjacent to Spring Street would be reserved for the church. Uh, the remaining spaces could be potentially uh, reserved for SAIC uh, and that again is a, an agreement with SAIC as part of their uh, incentives to get them to locate in Cookville. We would consider that. If those spaces are reserved for SAIC, they would be reserved uh, during the week, Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, at other times, weekends, uh, nights and weekends and holidays, that parking lot would be, those 135 or so spaces would be open to the public to use uh, nights, weekends and holidays. The lease itself is a 15 year lease term with an option to re renew for another 10 years or an additional period of time that may be approved by, by both bodies. Uh, the city would be responsible for all maintenance and liability of that parking lot. Uh, we built, will build it and construct it to city codes. Uh, the lease uh, payment uh, to the church is, is $1 a year. Uh, and we will, as part of the agreement too, uh, because we know there'll be many people parking there, try to have as safe a crossing as we can. Across Spring Street, we will upgrade the pedestrian crossing signals and as part of that agreement put those uh, upgraded signals in uh, the site you can kind of see from the map the location of it and i think we have an outline of of the uh, proposed parking lot again 185 spaces we also have designated spaces the church has three to four buses and we'll have designated parking in there for those buses as well but again it's needed parking uh, the church has been good to work with and i would um, ask for your approval of this lease agreement thank you is there a motion so moved second. second motion a second any Discussion or questions? One, yes, sir. One thing with the signals, you know, the uh, uh, signal crossing uh, uh, Spring Street, we have one on Washington with the rail trail that mm -hmm. times the seconds. And I would recommend, I'm not saying you have to, but it would be nice to have something with the seconds so you know whether you can park, cross Spring Street. And, and we did, we talked about that, uh, Public Works Greg and I talked about that. And we're going to, at the time we do the upgrades, we're going to make those crossings uh, ADA compliant. So we'll also have the, I call it the chirp. But yeah, the chirping. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to add that as well. The uh, chirp? The chirp. <laughs> okay. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor, I, yes, do have, I do have a comment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, um, I, uh, trying to not to be too hyper too much hyperbole, but I tell you what, I guess the, I, stuff like this gives me goosebumps. It's one of the reasons why I really like uh, in, uh, enjoying serving uh, as a city council member is that when the when the public and the private sector get together and uh, work work things out to the betterment of the entire community, we 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 need we need parking in in our downtown, and uh, the uh, the the laity of the First Baptist Church recognizes that and, and but. Uh, and they have responded to that to allow, to allow the city to basically mm -hmm. to lease that and to beautify that. I want to I want to emphasize that it's just not going to be up placed up to city codes. It's going to be it's going to be beautified. That that parking lot is going to be gorgeous. It's going to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, our city arborist that we've just recently hired 
is going to be uh, participating in that to make to make sure that that is going to be uh, even though it's just it is just a parking lot it's going to be it's going to be uh, uh, gorgeous and I, I my hats off and totally 100 percent thank you to First Baptist Church and their laity for uh, working with the city in order to get this done because it's just a win, it's just a win win. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, just a win-win for this in entire community, uh, and uh, who knows, they might uh, they might get some of those SAIC folks over there in their their church on Sundays, don't you think? <laughs> mm. It's a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a good step in addressing the need for for downtown parking, especially nights, weekends, and special events, yeah. which we don't have enough of. So, thankful for that. I would suggest that we go ahead and just prepay and pay them fifteen dollars and be done with it and, uh, <laughs> save the expense of writing 15 checks and just prepay that in advance so that'd be good budget amendment for yeah that. Uh, we may <laughs> take care of that. all right um all vote five yes votes motion carries thank you Thank you. Um, 7D, consider approval to declare surplus and donate vehicle to the Upper Cumberland Regional Airport. Mike Davidson. Mayor and Council members, we're a, uh, a partner in the Upper Cumberland Regional Airport with uh, White County and Putnam County and, and Sparta. And, and the airport recently sent out a request to the four governments uh, just seeking if, if anyone had a spare car that could be used by the by the airport by as a courtesy car for pilots as they land at the airport and so we checked we have a uh, 2008 Chevrolet Impala formerly a police car uh, that has been declared surplus previously by the council we just have not sold it on gov deals yet uh, it is in pretty good shape. The airport <laughs> manager came over and looked at it and said, yes, if we can make that available to the airport, they would like to have it. I believe the airport board has uh, already voted to accept it, uh, contingent upon the council of uh, transferring ownership to the airport, but I would ask you to transfer that ownership. We did get approval. This particular vehicle was purchased with a grant back in 2008 with the grant funds, and we got approval today from the state that we could transfer that to the airport, but I would ask your approval to make that transfer to them. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Mike, you sure Rick doesn't need that major services? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you never know. Where is Austro? Okay, there he is back in the well, booth. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you need that, Rick? <laughs> you know, with uh, we, I think this is. I think this is great. I think with that, with SAIC coming in and Facosa and Academy coming in, I, I think we're we're probably gonna need more than one of these. And, and, uh, well, I, that's a that's a great problem to have, and I am very pleased to vote yes on us supplying a 2008 Impala. Yeah, ju just as a background, I serve on the air airport board. Um, it, it's common in, that airports have courtesy vehicles when people land there for them to, to, to go and do their business while they're here, and um, I did uh, request that uh, we did approve it at the last meeting, but I, I made it pending that Sparta has to come up with one, too. That's just not all on us. So I uh, put the pressure on Sparta to make sure they donate one as well to, Good make, job, it, to make it fair. So um, hopefully they will, uh, or at least White County or one, one of those two. So that they, need, uh, they need to have two or three out there, and this was the most economical way to do that. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other comments? All vote. Five years so motion carries. Very good. That brings us, uh, finalizes the agenda portion of our meeting. We have time at the end if anyone would like to speak to the council on non-agenda items. We have time for that. Would anyone like to address the council on anything? Council members, all, anybody have anything? Yeah. Yeah. Our first concert in the parks tonight. Yeah, uh, all right. Dogwood Park, so invite people to that. What time's it at, Rick? 7.30. 7.30. 7.30. Very good. All right, we will be adjourned. Thank you.